How's it going, YouTube? DM Tombstone Belts back here again with a brand new video. <clears throat> and obviously, this is going to be posted tomorrow. I'm doing this on Saturday night, which, guys, if you didn't realize, I told you guys I was going to do a WrestleMania aftermath. This is WrestleMania 36 aftermath. And this is actually going to be a two parter since now of the shocking news that. WrestleMania is for the first time in history is too big for one night. It's a two night event now and one of the lowest crowd record attendance in history of zero. And I'll shock her with, well, it's due to the outcome of how of the world problems. So obviously that's the reason, but obviously uh, it was a good first part, uh, I mean, first day of WrestleMania. 36 and uh, starting off obviously with the opening to <clears throat> Stephanie McMahon addressing to the people watching at home that are, they were watching the pay-per-view the WWE Network or now the FS1 app I think they say now and obviously she explained why how why WrestleMania was doing the way it was doing and of course let's first start off with the kickoff before the main event the kickoff was, in day one of the kickoff was Drew Gulak versus Cesaro. And obviously, guys, I know I usually would do a a uh, prediction video with my buddy uh, Frank Lanasa, who's probably did his video on uh, on his channel if you want to look that up. But when when Drew Gulak took on Cesaro, obviously. With the outcome, it was all as much action as it could be for the fact there's not much of a crowd. And yet with Cesaro coming out with the win, it's already throwing a curveball into previous matches that are going, probably going to happen in the show. The mat, the mo Then the show starts off with the America the Beautiful, as it always would be. But instead of someone just like another recording artist of today being there singing it live, they actually go through certain past WrestleManias of certain uh, music stars that <coughs> sang it before. Like uh, Ray Charles, the late, great, great Ray Charles. Uh, Boys to Men, which was from WrestleMania 15, which I've recently seen today. Uh, Nicole's uh, one of the... the one of the people of the Pussycat Dolls that was from the 25th anniversary of WrestleMania, Aretha Franklin, and John Legend and Ella Black. Of course, all of them put together to sing the entire. They do like little segments of the of the song, like little courses of the song, and they merge it all into one. But that's how they open. And the first match, obviously, was the women's tag team championship match: Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross against the Kabuki Warriors. I mean, for the fact that the Kabuki Warriors wasn't defending their title as much as it usually would be. I mean, they were defending it a lot better than the last year's winners, the Iconics, which you haven't heard much from, but that's a whole different story. And yet, the Kabuki Warriors put a lot of effort into it, literally beating the hell out of uh, Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross. But in the end... It proven that Alexa, Alexa and Nikki gave it them all and needed to get this win, in which they did. So we have a new women's tag team champions, and it's a Nikki Cross and Alexa Bliss. Alexa Bliss, sorry guys. And uh, oh, and I want to mention that obviously, guys, your discretion is advised. For chances are a little bit of cursing may involve because of certain things that happen. And the second match is King Corbin versus Elias. And obviously, Elias was probably not going to show up because they didn't know if he was medically cleared. Corbin comes out was going to say that the ref was going to give him a 10 count and let him win by forfeit. But Elias comes out. Corbin tries to sneak attack him, but Elias smacks him with a guitar before the match starts. And then within the matchup, Corbin was trying to cheat his way by putting his foot on the ropes. The ref caught it, and then Elias will win by pulling the exact same thing he was doing. And by instead with the ropes, he holds the tights, and obviously Elias gets the win for that. Then we get to the big event of the third uh, of the first day, 
with their third match being Becky Lynch versus uh, Shayna Baszler for the Raw Women's Championship. And it's funny, when they show the promo, they don't censor out the words that Shayna Baszler was putting out. Kind of literally, like here on the WWE Network, you think they would censor out a little bit? But when they're doing the promo, you literally, at the end of, of the promo, Shayna Baszler's saying that she's going to beat the shit out of you, bitch. Like, literally said, like, you literally heard her say the S, like, literally say the S word. And yeah, here, they, here comes uh, Becky Lynch, the show promo her outside the arena with in her uh, style tr big semi truck decked out to look I mean to her style. But Shane Baszler comes out, comes Becky Lynch, and literally was just saying it was a beat down of a and we ever seen like in WrestleMania Shane Baszler throwing Becky around, smacking her head off the announce table. And many times I would say would have gotten the win. When she put the clutch in her. Oh yeah, I want to say also a spoiler warning. <laughs> Forgot to put that ahead of time, but yes. Well then again, there's not much of a spoiler since this has already happened and it's going to be posted tomorrow. So, nah, forget the spoiler. But anyway, Becky Lynch rolled out through the clutch and actually pins Shannon to the mat during the three count. Shannon doesn't break the hold, but then again, her arms are pinned during that hold. In which Becky Lynch retains the championship. And yet she's been holding this title since last year's WrestleMania. So now she's been champion for over, over a year now. And still continuing. The fourth match being Daniel Bryan versus Sami Zayn for the Intercontinental Championship. You know, I was always favorite of Daniel Bryan. I mean, Sami Zayn is not a favorite person. Like, to me, the fact that he has to have two guys come out here also be involved. Well, then again, Daniel Bryan had Drew Gulak out there helping him as well, but then again, it's three with two. And with Sami Zayn playing the cowardly way, running around, having Shinsuke Nakamura and Cesaro helping him out. As much as Drew Gulak trying to make it a fair fight, in the end, it was too much. <clears throat> the numbers counted up on Drew Gulak and Daniel Bryan, and Sami Zayn wins with the Huluma kick. <clears throat> and pins Daniel Bryan in the middle of the ring. After even Daniel Bryan was beating the shit out of him. The fifth match being that. <clears throat> here was a bit of a change that actually happened. Found out recently today. And it was kind of stupid. <clears throat> but in the end. I can see maybe they had a certain reason for this. But a triple threat ladder match. For the Smackdown Tag Team Championships. This was supposed to be a six man. Ladder match. For the tag team championships. But since Miz was out, they literally just had to have a member of each team. So now it was one versus one, but it was one on one on one instead of two on two on two. Kofi Kingston for the New Day versus Jimmy Uso for the Usos and John Morrison for Miz and Morrison. Literally just ladders being smacked into, and yet all the <coughs> high flying charisma for this match. And believe me, it. Yeah, you, know, you can hear the smacking of those ladders, and I mean, onto, I mean, their body smacking into these ladders since there's nobody to hear. I mean, that fill out the, like eliminate the noise within the ring. And yeah, I gotta say, for these guys, they really do good for when they uh, do the wrestling matches because all everyone knows about their choreographics and about they even mentioned about their communications within the ring, trying to keep it silent from the crowd so the crowds don't hear what they're saying because it's all, you know, choreographed. But yet they keep it very well hidden, even with no crowds there. But then again, they're professionals. And yet all three of them were on top of the ladder, rolling for the SmackDown tag titles. And yet they had to grab both of them. All three of them were holding on to the titles, and then they were hitting. Morrison was on the side where he actually unsnapped the belt, while the other two were grabbing onto the, the hook, or the hanger. It looks like a hanger, where the belts were actually hanging on. And they... Knock Morrison down. Little did they know he was holding the belts. And when they unsnapped, or should I say unfastened, because it's not even snaps anymore. That's uh, Velcro. It fell. He fell on top of a ladder that landed on his back, which hurt probably hurt by hell. But literally, no. They took he took the tag titles with him. So therefore, he won the match with the Miz and Morrison. Next is the. Uh, Obviously, the sixth match was Kevin Owens versus Seth Rollins. And, obviously, 
It was a, it was going to go to an all-out good fight until Rollins threw it out the, by grabbing the ring bell and smacking Kevin Owens in the head, causing a disqualification, giving Kevin Owens the win. And yet it was going to, Kevin Owens about ready to walk out, but Kevin Owens was, was not going to play that shit. Gets a mic, tells him he's still a little bitch, and he wanted to restart the match and make it a no disqualification match. So therefore they restarted the match, making a no disqualification match. And this made it even far worse. The fact now they're using weapons and you can literally hear that smacking off off the the chair when Seth Rollins literally smacks Kevin Owens in the back with the steel chair. You can hear every sound that's happening. And then as soon as Kevin Owens, as soon as Seth Rollins was thinking about going in for the win, Kevin Owens comes out of nowhere and Hayes back Rollins by smacking him twice with the ring bell, knocking him on the table. And he goes behind the barricade and climbs up on the WrestleMania sign, which is right behind the announcer's table. And he jumps right off of it, I think it's about like 15 feet in the air, smashes down on Rollins, and you can hear Rollins wheezing like he couldn't breathe. He grabs and throws him in the ring and hits him with a stunner and beats him again one, two, three. So Kevin Owens winning twice out of that one match. Okay, guys, the seventh match. Braun Strowman versus Goldberg for the Universal title. And I know you guys are thinking it was supposed to be Roman Reigns. I thought it was supposed to be Roman Reigns, too. It was supposed to be Spear versus Spear, but due to some circumstances, they switched it to Braun Strowman. And obviously, it was a quick match, as always, since you think about Goldberg, it ended quickly. Obviously, it was a battle of power. Goldberg starts by spearing Strowman four times. And he was going to go for a jackhammer. Strowman reverses it into a power slam. He gives him like three power slams. And Goldberg was still getting up. And then Strowman's like, okay, forget this. He goes in for a running power slam. One, two, three. And Strowman, for the first time, wins the Universal T Championship. Which I'm glad to say, yes, it's about time he wins a uh, the Universal Championship. He's been going after that title since Brock Lesnar hold, and he was supposed to be that champion. God, what? But at least I say I'm proud to say he's a champion. Because I know Goldberg, he can't be a champion forever. He's a Hall of Famer, and yet it's a rare occurrence for him to hold that title as a Hall of Famer because he's the only Hall of Famer to be a Hall of Famer and win a world title. But give mad credit for Goldberg going out there to give it all his best. But congratulations to Strowman to winning his Universal Championship. Now, the, during that okay time, we'll talk about a little segment with uh, Mojo Rowley and the Grunk, Rob Gronkowski, who is the host of tonight's I mean, two-night event, uh, WrestleMania. Here comes uh, our troop out of nowhere. <laughs> Obviously, he was the 24-7 champion, being up there with Mojo Rowley and Grunk. Talk about trying to hold him up there, but obviously as a 24-7 champion, defender 24-7. He gets knocked down by Grunk. Grunk's about to pin him, one, two, and then Raleigh throws him off, pins him, one, two, three, and now Mojo Raleigh wins the 24-7 title again. But now we come to our main event for the night of day one of WrestleMania. The Boneyard match. AJ Styles versus The Undertaker. And all this setup, no one knew what the Boneyard match was until we seen after the promo. It shows a scene which almost looks a lot like it was that one matchup between New Day and the White family or Bray Wyatt and Matt Hardy. And that, I don't know, I forgot what it was called. Like the, It was a, almost like, is there a different place? It was literally taking place in a place that looked like a graveyard, a cemetery. Different type of camera addings. You guys probably get what I'm talking about. I forgot the name of the matchup. That it mostly it was the mom, matches that Bray Wyatt was in. I forgot the name of them, but if you know, if you could tell me what they were in the comments below, that would be awesome. But anyway, AJ Styles makes his first appearance. Well, first, we thought it was The Undertaker when he when the hearse comes in through the like a big rusty gate, and two druids come out, <clears throat> open up the door to the back, pull out a coffin, and when they open the coffin, out comes AJ Styles, calling out for uh, Undertaker. And then 
Undertaker comes out from the entryway, but not like as a dead man. Guys, I can say I'm proud to see this for the first time for a return of going retro Undertaker back to the two, early 2000s with the American badass, big evil, biker Undertaker. He comes out in his motorcycle with a different theme you hear. And he's here ready for a fight. And yet these two were literally brawling it out. Not knowing how this match ends. Like there was no referee there to call to a pinfall or submission. So we don't know how this match was going to end. And then while they were literally beating the hell out of each other. AJ Styles getting his head smacked off that coffin. And literally thrown into the. Like literally he was going to take off a rock and start to strike Undertaker with the first. But Undertaker strikes and literally beats him senseless. And then Undertaker was about ready to, he picks up, I think it was like a metal rod or something. He was going to punch AJ Styles when he was up against the side of the hearse near a window. He moves out of the way and Undertaker's fist goes right through the window, cutting his arm up. Obviously he's pissed about that. Still being the senseless around. And they see, well, before that, AJ Styles was talking smack and they said there was a grave digged out for them. Which meant this boneyard, and then already saying about them burying each other in there, proving the fact that this match is not, it's just a modified version known as a buried alive match. So, anyway, during this battle, out of nowhere, here comes uh, the, the other members of the OC, Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows, to join the fight. But then, out of nowhere, when they stand back, like in this barn, like structure light goes up and the walls drop and it's like six or seven druids obviously Undertaker drops them with ease but then when gals and them try to you know, they put them down and then they try to help out again next you know Undertaker out of nowhere beats them both down senseless because they were going to attack him with a shovel he grabs the shovel starts smacking them and he's about ready to keep them down here comes AJ Styles out of nowhere, but I think with a tombstone. Oh, and uh, yeah, so he smacks him with a tombstone. Undertaker is down, and they start fighting. And I believe during this time he was going to he starts to he started to get the momentum against the Undertaker, and he goes through a wall with the Undertaker. And literally, I'm I'm like, oh my god, what's going on? Undertaker wheezing, coughing. Sounds like literally he's out of shape. To the point where he can't even fight no more. And then yeah, Styles gets him and he throws him into the grave. Knocks him out after he breaks the shovel on his back. There was a backhoe there. Or a tractor or whatever it is. And it's filled with dirt. And it's starting up about ready to bury the Undertaker. Probably going to win the match. And as soon as he started it up. And it looked like it was about to be the end. Out in the back. Bright light shows up, and Undertaker's right behind him. Uh, and then, they, then he starts coming back. He's starting to fight back. And then Styles is shocked because he just didn't realize what, who he's going to be up against. Then, of course, uh, Anderson and Gallo still trying to fight back, but they were, they were just a waste of time. Undertaker just literally throws Gallo right off the top of the roof of the barn, where it's actually I forgot to mention. Styles ran up across because he just was shocked at what he was dealing with. Undertaker chasing after him. There was a ladder set by there. Then Anderson tried to fight back. But he obviously got tombstone for his efforts on top of that roof. Styles was trying to run away. Undertaker stopped him with a bunch of flames that was on top of the roof. Then he would get to Styles and choke slam him off onto a plank of wood. And then they dra he drags him back to the grave. Talking a bunch of stuff like talk about my wife and all that. It's funny. And then AJ Styles is starting to say he was sorry and that. And then Undertaker starting to feel you know like trying to be like, like trying to be like the good guys. Like it's okay. You did your best. You did your best. And all that was a hoax. And then he just turns around and kicks him. AJ Styles into the grave. Goes to the back hole. Starts it up. And then just buries him in complete dirt. In which Undertaker then. Goes to the motorcycle and drives off. After revealing what was on that tombstone was AJ Styles' name. And the date of when he was born until the day, uh, probably on that day. 
leading now Undertaker's record with a win of 25 and 2. Walk goes, rides out on the motorcycle, raises his hand. The flames go out into the barn. You see his logo in the laser lights. And he drives straight off into the night with that victory. And that ends day one of WrestleMania 36. And guys, this means this is the end of the video of part one of WrestleMania 36 Aftermath. And guys, stay tuned for tomorrow at part two, which will be posted right well obviously i'll do the video right after wrestlemania and i'll be and it'll be probably posted the next day on monday but starting tomorrow sunday i'll post this so guys hope you guys enjoy oh hope you guys enjoy this video don't forget to leave a like don't forget to leave a like don't forget to share don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already leave a comment below what you guys think and as well tell me what you guys think of how wrestlemania this year is like and on damn tombstone belts don't forget to follow me on my Inst on my instagram at damn 96 as well on twitter at damn tombstone 96 for for upcoming stuff that's going to happen on dm tombstone belts and i'll see you guys in the next video so stick for part two